Hi everyone, my name is Esther Kwanza and I'm a Solutions Engineer at Lucidworks. Today I'm going to demonstrate the process of migrating a single node fusion instance to a multi-node clustered environment. Before I dig into the demonstration, I'd like to cover a few key concepts. Firstly, let's consider the motivations behind scaling out to a fusion cluster. Why would we want to do this? Fusion is highly scalable and you can take advantage of this by configuring your cluster with localized processing power. That means essentially dedicating specific servers to specific processing tasks. So for instance, you can maximize query throughput by turning on the solar and API processes on dedicated query nodes. Similarly, you can improve indexing throughput by distributing the connectors and API processes to dedicated ingestion nodes. Another huge motivation for scaling out to a clustered environment is to achieve high availability. A system is highly available if it's been configured to operate continuously without failure for a long time. Before expanding your Fusion environment, you should consider your source and target architectures. How is your current environment configured and what changes are you looking to make? In this demonstration, I'm starting with a single node Fusion environment. This is how Fusion functions out of the box. You can actually run this implementation on your laptop. It ships with the Fusion services, a solar instance, and a single Zookeeper instance. This is the recommended setup for a sandbox or development environment. However, not for any user facing environment like production or test. For the target implementation, I've chosen a three node cluster with all of the Fusion services enabled on each server. It is common practice for customers to scale out individual services on each Fusion node. So I could choose to run all of the Fusion services on servers one and two, but only turn on the Spark and API processes on server three. To meet Zookeeper's high availability requirement, it is required to configure at minimum three Zookeeper instances in production, like I've done here. When configuring the servers in your Fusion cluster, make sure that all of the servers can communicate with each other on the ports listed in the Fusion documentation. To make changes to these default ports, you can do so using the Fusion properties file. As always, when making changes in a production environment, Make sure to take a backup of your environment, and we recommend backing up Solar and Zookeeper data separately. Now I'll go through the process of actually building out this 3-node Fusion cluster. Throughout the demonstration, I use color to distinguish between the three servers in my cluster, and whenever an instruction applies to all of the servers in the cluster, I highlight it in blue. The very first step is to bring down the current Fusion instance. To do this, issue the bin fusion stop command. Next, create a three node Zookeeper ensemble. And since the full instructions are available in the official Apache documentation, I'm gonna go through this at a very high level. So once you've downloaded and installed Zookeeper on each of your servers, you'll create a configuration file called zoo.cfg. The easiest way to create this is to just copy the sample config file that ships with Zookeeper into a new file called zoo.cfg. Once you've created this file, open it up and specify a path for the Zookeeper data directory. Then go ahead and list the private IP addresses for each of the servers in your Zookeeper ensemble, as well as the ports that they will use for internode communication. Save the zoo.cfg file and navigate to the Zookeeper data directory. In this directory, create a file called myid and specify a unique ID for each Zookeeper instance. So as you can see here, I've specified an ID of one for server one, an ID of two for server two, and an ID of three on server three. Next, you'll copy the Zookeeper data from your single Fusion embedded Zookeeper instance into each of the newly configured external Zookeeper instances in your Zookeeper ensemble. So as you can see in this first instruction, I'm copying the version two directory from the Fusion embedded Zookeeper to the external Zookeeper that I've created recently. I'm doing the exact same thing on the second and third servers, but I'm actually copying it from server one onto each of the external Zookeeper instances on those machines. Once you've copied the Zookeeper data over, 
Start each Zookeeper instance one at a time. To make sure that all of the Zookeeper instances started properly and that you actually have a fully configured Zookeeper quorum, you can use Zookeeper's four letter word commands. I'm using the MNTR command, which stands for monitor, um, and this is to monitor the health of each instance. The output also shows me if an instance is a follower or a leader, and it's a good way to make sure that you have a quorum. Now that a Zookeeper quorum has been established, you have to update the connect string for the Fusion default search cluster. This is how Fusion knows where to find your configuration data in Zookeeper. To update the connect string, download the default search cluster file from Zookeeper. Use a command line text editor to manually update the connect string and then push the updated file to Zookeeper. As you can see here in the center, the connect string is the concatenated list of private IP addresses followed by the client port that Zookeeper is running on for each machine. And then it ends in what we call the Fusion version path. In this step, you'll pass that same Zookeeper connect string into the default ZK connect property, which is found in the fusion.properties file. While still in the fusion.properties file, make sure to disable any Fusion services that shouldn't run on a particular node. So in this example, we'll disable the embedded Zookeeper instance for each of your Fusion nodes, since Zookeeper is already running externally. The group.default property controls which services are started with the bin Fusion start command. So I've removed Zookeeper from this list. Save the fusion.properties file and start Fusion on the node from your source implementation. I only had one node in my source implementation, so that's the one I'm starting on first. Check the Solar and Fusion admin UIs to make sure that there are no errors and that your object data is in place. So that includes collections, pipelines, user roles, etc. At this point, your Solar data has not yet been replicated to the new Fusion nodes. Once you can confirm that everything is working as it should at this point, start the Fusion services on the rest of your Fusion nodes. Here is where we copy the solar data if you've turned on additional solar instances in your cluster. You can use the solar add replica command to create replicas of existing shards in each of your data collections. Make sure that for each collection you have at least two copies of the data and that each copy exists on separate servers in case of a node failure. On the right side, I have screenshots of the cloud view from the solar admin UI before and after adding replicas to the solar collections. Now that you have a fully configured cluster, start searching. Test out your new configuration according to the changes you've made. Thank you for tuning in.